Hello everybody and welcome to the Brog. We're at episode 74. I'm your host and today I want to talk about a little bit about the history of war on this planet. And I think we all have to sort of get to the place collectively where we don't want to kill anybody anymore, where we don't want war. Uh, I recommend this book if you haven't uh, read it called uh, New Penguin History of the World. It's just like a brief synopsis uh, that covers sort of an encyclopedia, encyclopedia of war. Uh, history of the planet is sort of like a history of war, I said before. Our fax line coming in. Another uh, book I recommend is um, if you want to read a history of the war of a certain people group is the Torah, the what people call the Bible. The majority, the majority of it, uh, you get a lot of history of conquests and various military campaigns. I think as long as we continue as a species to allow people to tell us what to do, to allow people to tell us to go to war, and as long as we we allow that, we'll continue to have war. You know, you could argue that uh, the most ruthless dictators uh, or ruthless people or people leaders over the history of the world uh, never may ne never forced anybody to, to kill any anyone. Some people wonder how people like George Bush can walk free after, you know, a million dead Iraqis and all that in a war that was pretty blatantly uh, founded on a pretext of weapons of mass destruction that weren't there if you're following the official story. So how, how do people like Bush go free uh, and aren't held uh, accountable by a war tribunal or war crimes or held, held guilty of war crimes and all that and uh, we could argue well he never killed anybody so the soldiers are the ones who are responsible. So our, our men and women who go to serve our country are held accountable for the crimes that they commit and not the people who sent them in the first place. And that's something to consider for the people in the Navy, Marines, Army, and people who are in secret service or secret uh, governments or organizations. It's, it's something to consider that if all of those people are men and women of uniform and uh, Blackwater type people, <laughs> If all those people stopped or refused to obey orders in the sense of killing other people, uh, then we would have that uh, peace on earth, I suppose. But the plan of some geo elites seems to be to get to the collectivity the collective of Earth to also get to the point where there's so much war and so much frustration with conflict that we as an as a species get to the point where we collectively want to breathe a sigh of relief and say like it's enough and uh, give us a world army, give us uh, global peace, give us a global religion and of course NATO is being sort of groomed right now to be the pre um, precursor to a world army and with the African Union with the European, European Union with the 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 partnership between Mexico United States and Canada 
North, the North American Union, with all these unions later being governed by uh, the world government uh, with a world army, I mean, that will be sold and will make a lot of sense. That seems to be where things are heading. I wanted to talk about bullying, though. I mean, have you ever been bullied? Have you ever had the uh, people bully you? The tactic seems to be right now, like, you know, battleships armed with nukes are going to off the coast of, uh, off the Mediterranean, like, around Iran. Um, and I've had uh, police around me bully me, like in the sense that it's a psychological tactic to intimidate somebody into aggression by, you know, you stand around them and then you get closer and closer and the entire time you can say like, well, I'm, not, I'm just standing here, I'm just standing right here. You know, you get to the point where they're literally on top of you, I'm just standing on top of you. And then, you know, they grab you and if you fight back, it's resisting arrest. So it's a tactic of bullying or, uh, you know, the tactic of, of, of war and global positioning. <laughs> it seems to be like that's what uh, the military industrial complex is sort of good at right now is, uh, what, you know, we're just, we just got battleships and right off your coast, what? And then of course, you know, there's tit for tat and then uh, now there's strikes on, uh, the British Embassy by alleged Iranian protesters. So the drum beats to war with Iran is a topic that has sort of been occupying my mind. But um, another thing is Pakistani officials have given all the CIA assets and, and U.S. presence uh, and people that work for the U.S. government uh, basically 15, 14 now days to leave Pakistan because they're upset with NATO strikes that were done two miles inside of Pakistan near Peshawar. Um, this, we have just like a, you, I mean, do you know how many wars, do you know how many fronts the U.S. is in right now? Most Americans don't know that when they say like, oh, come home from the war. Like, what, which one? The, the U.S. military industrial complex is in so many fronts right now. They still have bases in, where was it? In Vietnam. They're finally recalling troops from Vietnam. They still have uh, British soldiers in Germany and US soldiers in Germany. There's still, uh, there's US troops in ba and bases in England. Uh, Menwith Hill, there's a huge naval base, Northern Europe, North England. There's huge naval bases all over the world, off the coast of Bahrain. There's obviously the Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan bases. There's a military presence all over the world by the U by the U.S. There's bases in South Korea still, and there's people that uh, who work for the secret military, the secret uh, undercover organization. So I mean, like, uh, there's a huge military apparatus in the world right now that most people are probably unaware of. And all of these people want to make more money and not less money. All of these businesses want to make more money and not less money. Uh, the military industrial complex as a, as a revenue generator, as a money maker, wants to make more money, not less money. So keep that in mind. But at the same time, you have these geo elites who see a one world government and consolidation of power as the end game. You know, Albert Pike. Albert Pike wrote a hundred years ago about the three major world wars that would unfold and 
the two so far have unfolded the way he predicted a hundred years ago, and so the third is to foment a crisis between um, the Islamic uh, nation, the nation of Islam, and uh, Zionists and people who would support Zionism. So you can sort of see how that's playing out. A lot of Islamic countries surround Israel. And Israel has nukes but won't tell anybody about them and blah blah blah. The history of the world is a history of war, a history of conflict. And researching the things that I've researched and knowing the things that I know sort of get me to the place where I think Ugh. The history of, of Earth is a history of war. It seems to be a conflict planet. And until we all, humanity, collectively decides to stop fighting each other, then we'll be, continue to be manipulated by people who serve to gain and, and profit by us fighting each other. I mean, nobody, no country can go to war with another country unless soldiers uh, are willing to kill people. So we say that we have to support our troops, but I support our troops not killing people. I support our troops uh, you know, defending our borders, but not uh, murdering anybody else. And I have family in the military, um, in different divisions of the military, and uh, you know, I support them as long as you know, you can't stand behind a, a flag or stand behind uh, a concept if it starts going into areas of genocide and murder. I mean, you can be nationalistic and follow your dictators all the way down a rabbit hole until you're, you know, genocidally murdering whoever they want. So I'm sure there's there was great people in, in Germany uh, you know, pre 1930s and 40s, and great, and great police officers and great military people. Uh, but if you blindly follow ideals or blind, blindly follow a flag or a man, uh, you wind up, you can wind up, and history has shown us that you wind up into this place of being a puppet. So support the troops. Support the troops. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, the troops are a vehicle. You know, the troops are a vehicle used by people, used by governments. And if the vehicle is not behaving appropriately, then I don't support that vehicle. Troops are made of human beings, and if, if, uh, if you support human beings killing other human beings, then that's sort of only going to perpetuate this constant cycle of war on Earth as we've seen. And at the same time, I'm aware that there's geo-elites that are going to use all this and sort of get everybody in on Earth to collectively want to stop war, and thus being their global problem to offer a global solution of one world government, one world army, and uh, the one world army enforcing the will of the countries, enforcing the will of the geo-elites and the countries who don't want to uh, comply, as we see already NATO, like I said earlier, being the precursor to that. NATO NATO soldiers and NATO enforcing the will of the of the United Nations. It's gets me to the point where honestly it's I I'm like, uh I get it and I don't like it. I don't want to be a part of it. And I feel for the people who get distracted and led by their fear and led by their senses into uh, constant worry and constant panic uh, over the global situation of war and everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it seems like if we look back in history, as this book sort of documents, we see war. If we look around us, we see war. So there's people that want us to get to the point where we look to the future and don't see war, but as long as uh, humanity's been on this planet, uh, we see a history of war. So it's not something that, at the same time, that you want to accept, um, but as long as we allow to, 
people to manipulate us into killing each other and warring. As long as we allow our, our so-called leaders to do that to us, uh, it'll continue to happen. So collectively, humanity needs to say, we're not going to kill each other anymore. And I think the internet, I think, uh, increased awareness, increased information is sort of helping that happen. But at the same time, you have to be aware of geo-elites who can see all this coming and will prepare for it, offering a global solution, global army, global one-world government. And for the Christians and the people who don't like that, uh, who like that idea, there's also, you know, if you read the book of Revelation, if you read the Quran, if you read uh, the Torah, then that also prophesies a one world government and one world religion enforced by a messiah character enforced by god himself so it's we it's it's strange when the book of revelation agrees with the united nations and agrees with the way the world is going to a one world government so christians want a one world government and so do the satanic or secular geo elites just simply to consolidate power, get more power, get more money, get more control. So it's a strange world we live in. I feel like I'd like to take a vacation on another planet. I feel like I've had enough of Earth sometimes when I think about these type of things. And in other news, my stomach is gurgling really loudly. I haven't eaten anything yet today, you may be able to tell. In other news, the ta yeah, the tactic of bullying is just, it seems to be this is the tactic being used. What, we don't, what, our battleships are right off your coast. What, you know, don't do anything, you know. Or if, like, the United States had their way. What, we just, we just have troops all over your country. We just have military bases. Why are you fighting us? Look! Look, everybody, they fought us. Look, everybody, they attacked us. Why? Why would they do that? Like, you have a huge military base, huge military presence in their country, off their coast, and you're wondering why you're being attacked? Why? Why? Are we, we're, we're a victim. Look at us, everybody. It's irritating. It's problem, reaction, solution. It gets tiring, and I feel for those people who tirelessly try to document the history of war and current events because it's just that you constantly see this repetition and uh, I'm not the type of person that uh, can endlessly document this stuff I and get into all the details and history of con and history of conflict it for me it just gets tiring and irritating and you see the same patterns over and over again so But it makes good news and good headlines, and you know now uh, it's it's so aggravating looking at the news. I mean, and then how much of it is believable? Ugh, puts ties my head in knots. We have to stop fighting each other. At the same time, we have to be streetwise and be aware that there is geo elites and people who plan this and who are creating this global problem to offer a global solution. There's people who want to make it so bad on the planet as far as war goes that humanity collectively wants to breathe that sigh of relief and, and, and will invite a global solution like a global 
governance or global currency, global army. And you can already see the increments of it happening already. And the, the nations that will fight against it, oh, surprise, they have uh, NATO bombing them. Or, surprise, the Muammar Gaddafi's, Saddam Hussein's of the world uh, who don't go along with the agenda are demonized. And, surprise, their regime is taken over, their country is taken over. And uh, this is just the way it is. None of this affects uh, why you're here. I mean, you could be born into a rich family or born into a poor family or born on another planet. You're here to develop your soul, to learn to live without envy, hate, or greed. To love your friends and your family, love your love as much as you can, overcome your fears, develop your soul, develop you, develop yourself. Try not to get caught into this whole materialism and try not to get caught into um, the things that are happening on the planet uh, as far as war goes. I mean, you could have been born any time in history, but here you are, so... The things that are going on in the world don't affect the fact that you're here to learn how to... develop your soul, to mature your soul, to mature yourself. And if you don't get it right this time, you may have to come back and do it again. So... That's why spirituality, turning inward, meditation, listening to yourself and your soul, listening to your, to where you are really, that's what matters. I've been asking myself lately, like, what do I want? What do I want? What do you want and why do you want it? Those are questions that are good to ask yourself. What do you really want? Being a bit of a musician and having a website, managing the businesses that I do, I have to ask myself quite a lot, what do I want? I've lived in other parts of the country, I've lived um, on the east and west coast, and I've asked myself, what do I want? I've traveled Canada, the United States. I've been to Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, North, South Dakota, Montana, Ohio, you know, I've been to a lot of states, uh, Texas, uh, I've been to Europe, uh, and plan on going back, and I have to ask myself, what do I want? Why do I want it? being in bands in the past and, and playing shows and playing in cover bands and playing in front of people, you ask yourself, I do, what do I want? Do I, why do I want this? Or what do I want? Or what do I like about this? I played in a cover band for a while and I, at first I thought, I want to play shows. And then I would ask myself, why do I want to play shows? What do I like about that? And then after a while, I actually stopped enjoying playing shows. And I stopped enjoying playing cover music as well. And I thought to myself, I want to play original music. So, and then there's times in my life where, you know, I've asked myself, why do I want, why do I want to, um, to do this certain thing, or why do I want that? These are questions that I ask myself a lot. Why, why do I want this, or what do I, what do I like about it? And this last few days, um, 
especially with like the upgrades and all that, I've been asking myself, what do I really want out of life? Uh, what do I really want out of my life? Um, things seem to be aligning. I, you know, I'm, I, for me, I've I've quit drinking. I've quit drinking pop, tea, coffee, beer, alcohol. You know, I haven't uh, drank coffee, tea, or pop in over a month now. I quit drinking alcohol officially on my birthday, you know, last month. And um, before that, I had been tapering off any drinking I've been doing, but so I've been, if you want to say sober, I've been sober for a while. <laughs> um been eating as healthy as I can this last month and uh, you know I see that things are aligning and going better and 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 I ask myself what do I really want you feel like part of you has been working 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 your entire life towards something and then you get there and you're like what what is it I wanted about this what is it I've been working for was I working for the sake of working or or uh, what is it about this that you that you want? What is it about success? So how do you define success in your life? What is it about that success that you want and why do you like it? Is success to you being wanted or playing shows? Uh, is success to you defined as uh, money? Is, defect, is success defined as friends and family and, and having good relationships with people? Good relationships with people? How do you define success in your own life? And when you get it, will you want it? Will you recognize it? These are a lot of questions that I have. More questions than answers recently. These last few days has been weird for me because I've been trying to sleep and it's been hard for me uh, off and on sleep just thinking like, what is it that I want? What do I want? Why do I want it? So, yep. That's all i got to say. Thanks for watching the Brog, episode 74. <clears throat> A little bit all over the map today. And I haven't eaten yet, so my brain probably isn't working right. We were listening to Chevelle. Take care. Have a good day. Tell your friends to check out adamjosh.com. I try to offer my version, my truth. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I'm confused. <laughs>